Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a fascinating looking puzzle uh, by a new constructor, to us at least. This is by Fritz Dis, um, and it's a new twist on a rule set that we have seen before. So um, basically to solve this, I think we're going to have to unlearn what we have learned, to borrow a phrase. Uh, it's called Circuit Breaker and um, I'll read you the rules in just a moment. Now the reason we're covering this puzzle is well basically it's because two people have recommended to it to us and these are two people who are not Mark so I trust their judgment um, but it grew out of a discussion on the discord server recently where it was noted that an awful lot of the puzzles that we're doing on the channel especially the puzzles I've been doing are brutally difficult they're taking me a very long time and um, that I, I was basically asked is that deliberate well it's not really deliberate it's just the way I think that the whole Sudoku movement has moved over the last couple of years um, and it's the puzzles we're getting sent and, and recommended um, but I have absolutely nothing against more approachable puzzles subject to one thing and that is that those puzzles need to of course be interesting and clever um, and you know because I want you guys to enjoy trying to solve them and I want to enjoy solving them on the channel as well um, so this one has been recommended apparently because it should be relatively doable um, I don't know what that means. You will know more about what that means because you'll be able to see from the length of the video. But if you've, if you've found a lot of the puzzles difficult, this might be one to dust off your Sudoku skills on and try and solve. Um, before I read you the rules, what do I want to say? A couple of things. Oh, firstly, I'll give a just a quick shout out. We got sent some... Look at this. De Trois and his variety channel. He's made this picture of me. <laughs> I'm looking a bit stern, I think, but I'm still remarkably impressed. It's something I wish I could do. I would love to be able to draw, um, but I can't. Um, but uh, so what should I say about that? Probably bobbins is the most appropriate thing. But de toi, thank you very much for sending that in. It made Mark laugh a lot. He said it was the one picture we've seen that has succeeded in making me look older than I actually am. Um, now, anything else? Uh, yeah, do have a look over on Patreon at the moment. We've got so much stuff going on there. Our new Sudoku puzzle hunt is the sort of big news in town. I think we've had a hundred correct solutions now and well, all of the feedback has been stellar. So really well done if you've managed to get through it. And um, yeah, do have a look at it if you haven't had a chance to. Um, it's a sequence of puzzles based around the seven wonders of the ancient world. Um, now, the other thing that's over on Patreon, which is far harder than the puzzle, the Sudoku puzzle hunt, is Fistemafel's Yin Yang Philomino puzzle. Well, my solve of it, that's nearly an hour long battle I had to enter into uh, with the Sudoku devil himself. So um, that's probably worth watching if you like the longer stuff. And also just today, we've released uh, the solution to February's um, monthly reward, which was um, the Groundhog Day. Uh, sequence of puzzles so we've released a solution video for that for anyone who is a three dollar patron and I will just say I mean that sequence of puzzles is it's so cool I mean Seth Hollison designed the puzzles themselves and there could not be a sequence of puzzles more fitted for Groundhog Day because you solved the first puzzle and it le led you to a new link you click the new link and it looks like you're getting exactly that puzzle back again and then you do that puzzle and it looks like you're getting that puzzle back again. So, of course, there's a different rule set each time. So Sed had somehow designed three, well, he designed one Sudoku grid that could be solved using three different sets of rules. It's really am amazing. Um, so if you've not had a chance to look at it, I've spoiled it a bit by telling you what will happen, but it's definitely worth a try. Now, let's get on to Fritz Diss's puzzle. What are the rules? Um, now, this is called it's got a minimal between lines constraint in it. So I'll explain what that means. So normal Sudoku rules apply. Now digits on a line must be between the digits in the connected circles. So you can see all of the circles are connected by purple lines today, it looks like. Um, and normally the way between line rules would work would be if that was a one and that was a six, for example, then we would know that these cells on the purple line joining those circles have to lie between one and six. So they'd have to be two, three, four, or five in each case. Now that is not what happens here because the digits on the line must allow the smallest possible difference between the numbers on their circles and a difference of zero is possible. Now it's probably best if we look at an example to see what that's getting at. Here you go. 
Right, so this is Fritz Diss's own example. So you can see on this line here, three digits are on this line, this two, this two, and this two, and they are all the same digit. And that's because in this puzzle, they're forced to be all the same digit because the rule is that we have to place digits on the line such that to the extent we possibly can, we keep the difference between the circle squares down to a minimum. And because it's possible to put the same digit, it doesn't have to be a two in each of this square, this square, and this square, we must put the same digit in each of these squares. Um, so in Fritz's example, he's decided that a two goes in each of those squares, which of course forces the cells, the circled cells to be one and three. Now, if you look at the four here, in fact, I think any line of this nature would have to contain the same digit with a difference of zero between the, the circled cells because there, you can see this cell here, I'll put a square, that cell and that cell, they don't see each other by Sudoku. So there is nothing preventing them from being the same digit. So in order to keep the difference between the circles down to a minimum, we must make them the same digit. They wouldn't have to be four, but for the sake of exposition, Fritz just has made them four in this one. So he's used one, two, threes and fours. Um, so that's how it works. Now, I have not got my head around what this means, um, but I presume, well, actually, I mean, it's pretty remarkable, isn't it? That just that constraint and one given digit is going to fully specify this to have a unique solution. Wow. OK, I'm looking forward to trying it. Do have a go yourselves. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I think we must have to look at these long, long lines. So what we're saying is we have to, to the extent we can. Yeah, so if we could, we would want to put the same number in all of these cells. Well, we can't do that, but it does look to me. Yeah, but we can just put two different numbers along the whole of this line. So that's probably what we need to do. Well, it is what we need to do, but I'm just wondering about using colors. I know I like I go a bit crazy about colors, but you can see that whatever that is, I'll make that one red. That one I'll make what should I make? Dark grey? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm in a grey mood today. In fact, this matches my, my clothes. So this is ideal. Right. So, so you can see that that could be red. That would be grey. Then that would be red. That would be grey. That would be red. That would be grey. That would be red. That would be grey. So there is nothing preventing us from just having two digits along this line. So that would allow these two circled cells to only be two digits apart. So we could have one. Oh no, we can't have one and four. Actually, I was about to say we could have one and four with two, three in the middle, but we can't because there's a four there. Let's do it the other way. Let's say that this was seven, eight, and then we could have nine and six into those squares. And that would work. So yeah, so I don't, I don't quite know how we take that forward. Don't know what goes in there yet. I wonder whether we just do a bit of Sudoku, do we? Can we do any Sudoku here? Yes, I can. I can do Sudoku. I can do Sudoku with the greys. The greys are there, that's got to be a grey just by Sudoku. And red, red's got to be here by Sudoku. Oh, well, there's a little bit. That is, a, that's really interesting. I mean, I appreciate we haven't actually got any digits or anything. But what I can see is that the red and the grey here, whatever these two squares are, they can't be in those two squares. So this line, one, two, one, two, sorry, one, two, one, two, one, two, 
one, two, one, two, is exactly the same in the sense that we can populate this line with just two different digits. So we must populate it with just two different digits. And we need those digits to presumably be consecutive in order to keep the difference between those circles down to a minimum. And we can do some more coloring again. So let's do coloring down this line. So blue will be, we can just alternate the blues. That's going to be the quickest way of doing it. And then we've got, we'll alternate the oranges like that. We can fill in that with orange by Sudoku. This with blue by Sudoku, I think. Oh, blue, blue, blue here. That's got to be blue. Blue, blue is on this between line here. It's in one of those two. Well, it's not necessarily on the line, but it's definitely in one of those two squares. Um, Okay, have we exhausted that? No. Oh, that's actually that's this is just I just nearly made a mistake there. I looked at this orange and this orange, and I did that, and then I was about to put an orange in here, but that wouldn't be right. I'm just saying the blue is in one of those two positions. I'm just going to remove that. That's going to confuse me otherwise. The orange. Yeah, the orange has to be in one of those positions. But I don't know which one. Okay, sorry. Uh, that's all a bit of a digression. What is this telling us? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe we've actually got to use this four somehow. Yeah, okay, let's think about that. Um, I mean, it's very clear this can't... Obviously, we can't use 1 and 4 for these two squares. That's not going to work because the 4 is ruled out of both circles. So this is not... Yeah, actually, that's interesting. Also, 4 is seeing red and 4 is seeing grey. So not only can you not have a 4 in either circle, you can't actually have a 4 anywhere on the line. So, the, so that means 1, 2, 3 and 4 are ruled out from all of these squares. Because obviously we can't start putting 2 in here, for example, because in order to keep these down to a minimum difference, these have to be consecutive digits. And so you'll, if you try and put two in either circle, you'll need a four in one of the gray or the, or the red lines, and that's all gray or red cells, and that won't work. So I think those squares have to be high, well, high-ish. They have to be from five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And they have to go up. So if this was a 5, what we can't do is go down. Four. We can't have 3, 4 here. Yeah. Um, so if it's, in fact, it's it's almost, it's a bit strange in the sense that in, we know that these two digits are two apart in the sense that if this is 5, this is 8. If this is 6, this is 9. So 7 is not possible in in these squares. Because seven would have there has to be two digits between seven and something, so it can't go seven in in the circle eight nine here and then ten down here. That won't work. So it must be. It would have to. So if you put seven in here, it would have to accompany a four, which will clash here. So we you can actually whittle this. Yeah. Okay. And then then we know if this is five eight or six nine, there's always a seven. There's always a seven in. Um, each one of these pairs within their boxes. 5, 8. So 5, 8 would have 6 and 7 on the, on the between lines. And 6, 9 would have... All oh right, okay. So we've always got 6, 7 and 8 on these lines. Sorry, I'm slowly getting my head around this. Um, so these two are 6, 7 and 8 now. This line now can't have... 
That's interesting. Maybe maybe it's just efficient to go through and ask what it can have. It can't be 9, 8 because you'd have to go 10, 7 and you can't put 10 in a Sudoku grid. It can't be 8, 7 because that's going to clash with the 7 here. It can't be 7, 6 because that's going to clash with the here. So the and it can't ah and it can't be six five because if it's six five into the um, the blue and the orange, you'd have to put seven in one of the circles. This is really it's very clever. So so the highest digit you can put in these squares is five, and you can never put one in here because you can't put zero in a circle. So these are two, three, four, or five which is nearly good enough for us to be able to conclude there's definitely one digit in each pair, but it's not quite. We need to squeeze it a little bit harder. Uh, this one must be two, three, four, or five. Have we got any others? Two, three, four, or five there, two, three, four, or five there. Gray, I've just, no, look, I've got gray, gray, gray here. So that the fact we've added more colours has restricted the greys and the reds a bit more. I can get a grey there. Now let's just check the reds again. Yes, reds. I can get a red here. Reds in one of those two. I don't think I want to pencil mark dominoes yet, so I'll, I won't do that if you don't mind. Um, Gray. Oh, hang on. If I color, do that. So let me just have a quick stare at grays. Um, no, let's do the same with reds. There's definitely a red in one of those two cells. Might be interesting. The other thing I've not looked at is this line here. Oh, this is very clever. This is really in. Look, look at um, red and grey on this line. Red and grey see both of those cells, which means both of these cells just, well, firstly, they cannot, neither of those cells can include a seven. Now, once neither of them can cause and include a seven, that actually has quite a profound effect on, on what we can do here. Because we now can't have, for example, 9 and 6 here, or 8 and 5 here, because either of those are going to need a 7. So can you... I'm just wondering, because the other thing I'm seeing is that both of these squares, they, they the way this, the geometry of the puzzle works is that this domino... So whatever's in that domino. So it's it's like we're being given, th there's three consecutive pairs. There's red and gray, blue and orange, and there's whatever goes in these. And these are a different consecutive pair. And these two can't be a high, high combination because the seven is ruled out. So if, can we do even six and five? If this was six and five, You'd have to put seven in a circle. Ah, I'm not sure whether that's possible or not. I think it might be because I only have one red and one one grey and one red seeing each each circle. So I think unfortunately these squares have to be from two, three, four, five, and six. Oh, oh my goodness me. This is absolutely beautiful. I'm now going to show you something that will make your heart sing. Look, look at this combination. Now, can this domino contain a four? Let's just try it. Let's put a four here. The answer is no. Why is it no? Well, 
It's because look what that does to this square. It makes the combinations in 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 this domino. It, it means that <laughs> so I'm not being very articulate. Let, in fact, let's let's do it a bit more slowly. These combinations now are two three. Or five six now I can't combine the five and the three together or the six and the two together because that will push these between lines out too far we know these are consecutive digits so they're either two and three or they're five and six now if they're two and three or five and six what do you always have to put in a circle what do you always have to put in a circle you have to put four in because if this is a two three pair one of these circles is a four if it's a five six pair one of these circles is a four so if you make either blue or orange four you break the puzzle it's impossible to do because of the way that the 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 the, the, the thingies the digits are forced apart and you get the um you get the uh you get one of these combinations forced and it doesn't matter which is forced, you always end up with a four in a circle and you can't have a four in a circle. So this is just absolutely beautiful. I'm seeing what this is going to do now. If you can't have four here, what's our combination now? These have to be consecutive, remember. So the five's got to come out. So now we actually know all of these. Boom, 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 boom. I get rid of four. I know it's not four as well. Sorry, I could have done that at the same time which means those two squares are a two, three pair. It means that we now know what goes in these circles, one and four. This is not two, three, this is not two, three. Um, well, let's ask whether four can be in one of those two squares now. Well, the answer is no, it definitely can't be, because if we put four in one of those two squares what do you have to put in one of the circles three and three is unfortunately not possible so this is five six maybe i should color these these in different digits these are different digits aren't they i could make those those two colors there we go um and can we go further with this we can does that mean we get this one Yeah, we do. We do get this one because, yes, it's beautiful. Again, the geometry, look at how it works. Red and grey, see these two squares. One of these squares is a six. So six is definitely, I. so imagine the six was here. It will rule six out of both of the red and the grey. If the six isn't there and it's here, it, it still rules it out of the red and the grey. So this must be a seven, eight pair. Uh, I probably could have done that more efficiently by double clicking them but anyway I've done it that way so this is a 7-8 pair which means it must be surrounded in its circles by 6 and 9 this one is a 2 or 3 um, that one's got to be a 7 or an 8 Five and six must be surrounded by four and seven. And suddenly we've got quite a lot of the grid filled. Those three squares have got to be one, eight and nine. Look, just by Sudoku, that's the only digits we've not placed in box three yet. Red. Look at where red goes in box two. Red has to be on the line. <laughs> this is very cool as well. So let's ask the question, can you put red there? The answer, no. No, you can't, because if you do, it doesn't... Oh, hang on, where did my digits go? I want to put seven and eight in there. Oh, there they go. Right, so if we try and put red here, look at what will happen to this square. It will. This square will be consecutive with whatever I put in that square. But we know that both of those digits need to be the consecutive ones in order to keep the difference down to a minimum. This puzzle is very clever. So you can't put red here is what we learn from that. And that means red must be here.
but that yeah that means that can't be eight if that's eight what do I have to put in here I can't put nine because I can't put ten there I have to put seven but seven is there so this is seven now and that gives us red red is seven ah no I just I just did the wrong thing what just put sevens in those squares gray is eight that these eights uh, are locking the eight into this box look that's got to be eight I think this um, between arrow is now forced because it must go it can't go seven eight nine so it must go seven six five the seven here forces that square to be a four that's a seven so it's red I don't know sorry we may, may have been able to get that one before I just didn't spot how to do it that four is giving us a one at the bottom of the grid so its counterpart there must be a four this one is giving us a nine here and a one here and that gives us a one here and a one here and I don't want to say anything about cooking with gas but it does seem to be going slightly better at the moment than sometimes um, <laughs> why did I say that <laughs> why did I say that before I knew that it was going better um, oh Simon you are so silly two three five six nine so this is five six nine this is five six nine bobbins right okay I've still got some lines though that I've not used so let's take a look at those oh and in fact this one had stuff on it didn't it oh hang on hang on hang on orange and blue orange and blue are in this two of these three squares so this must be a one two three triple because we can never use a four in the triple so if we know that the low digit that two and three are used we can and we can't use the four and with these we know these are consecutive this is one two and three and therefore we know the two must be the middle one and we got a one here so actually we, we get all these and we can color them in the two oh no we can't um or maybe can we no we can't oh you rotten thing okay we can't color them in don't color them in it won't work um, oh dear is it this one then is that going to be the way that we disambiguate everything we need a disambiguator um, <laughs> it reminds me of that mad professor in the Simpsons with his rebigulator a concept so stupid that uh, it would do well on cracking the cryptic um, right come on do we know anything about this do we can we put something on this line oh we can do oh yeah hang on orange orange is here now that that forces that oh yeah lovely that forces that to be orange that does give me my um, give, give me twos in orange which gives me threes in blue so that one can turn blue and I must be able to get one more blue which I can get here I think and that actually is a beautiful blue that is a beautiful blue why is it a beautiful blue well because I can see that this square can't be a one because of this one here so I can't go two one so I must go four five and that places a five in that box four nine here gives me this square is a six that must be a nine that six gives me the six and the five uh, this column needs a one and a nine in it that must be nine this must be one nine goes here by Sudoku these two squares are a five six pair this square must be a six by Sudoku this column needs six eight and nine ah that's a six 
This is eight. Oh no, I've broken it. Oh no, it's not six, eight, nine. Thank goodness for that. I wasn't seeing this eight. Oh, that is horrible. I hate that feeling. Four, eight, and nine. No, stop it. Four, six, and nine. Four, six, and nine. I don't know what this digit is, but I'm very happy not to know for once. Ah. Oh. Simon. Right, anyway, I can see nines. Look, I've got nines there and there. So the only place nine can go in this column is here. This is now four or six. Nine must go here. Oh, nine goes there by Sudoku, and that is on one of these diagonal lines. So in order to keep the difference down to a minimum, we've got to make it the same. That gives us a nine and a four. So in this column, look, we haven't placed one and we haven't placed five. There's a one here, so it must go one five this nine is giving us a six here oh that we, we could have got from that circle i just didn't think to look up there four and five six here four here by sudoku these squares are now two four and five which we can do four two five there must be a one here there must be a six here this square is a 5 by Sudoku. That forces the 5 and the 6. We need a 1 and 6 there, which we can do. Which means these are 4, 8, and 9. That looks good. 4, 4 goes here. 9 goes here. 8 goes here. And we click tick. And that is how to solve a beautiful puzzle by Fritz Dis. That really is... I mean, it's pretty incredible, actually. Uh, maybe I should highlight all of the colours just to... Oh, it won't let me six will it let me will it let me highlight the six somehow yes um because i mean it's really amazing that you can um high well that you can specify a whole grid from just these few lines and a four in the corner and the way that four worked it sort of forced the first line to be high which had this profound effect it made both of these other lines low and then that the thing with the four and forcing this to either be a two, three or a five, six, and therefore have to have a four in a circle, that that is memorable logic. That is so clever. Um, I still haven't worked out how to purple fives. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let me try and do it slowly just to make everybody feel purpley today. There we go. Purples. One, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. So some numbers, unfortunately for them, remain colourless. But uh, yeah, anyway, it's still a very pretty pattern. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we'll be back later, of course, with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And thanks to Fritz Dis on his debut on the channel. Really impressive stuff.